there are some shows that we watch just because of a certain character we love, or they at least elevate the show so much that we can't imagine watching it without them. However, on occasion these characters were only meant to be bit part players of brief cameos, but proved so popular that they ended up staying for the long haul. In this video we're going to take a look at 15 actors who turned small TV parts into breakout roles. Let's take a look. He may be a household name now in leading movies like Guardians of the Galaxy, Jurassic World, The Lego Movie, and most recently The Tomorrow War, but his first real breakout role was as the dopey but lovable Andy Dwyer in Parks and Rec. Pratt was only supposed to be in six episodes, but he was so good he was given a bigger recurring role, and his improvisational skills made the character one of the best on the show. But Pratt isn't the only one who managed to make their own breakout role. Aubrey Plaza's April wasn't even in the show at all during development, but after the show's creator Michael Schur met Plaza Plaza during casting, he was so taken by her unique weirdness, he made a scene and character for her alone. Ben Schwartz's Jean Ralphio was also meant to be a small side character, but ended up being another mainstay due to the actor's performance. Another workplace comedy filled with eccentric and brilliant characters is, of course, The Office, with one of the best of them being Craig Robinson's Daryl Philbin. But like everyone on this list, Daryl was only meant to be a minor role, but Robinson was so good he ended up being given even more screen time, which led to him getting roles in Pineapple Express, Hot Tub Time Machine, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I mean, speaking of Daryl's, Norman Reedus's Daryl Dixon was a character explicitly made for the actor. Reedus actually auditioned for the role of Merle, but the Walking Dead team liked him so much, they made the role of Daryl for him. And now he's appeared in over 175 episodes on the show and essentially become the leading man. Moving on from one horror series to another, Stranger Things' Steve Harrington, played by Joe Keery, was only meant to be a small character in season one and was just meant to be a cocky douchebag without much depth. But the Duffers ended up falling in love with both the character and the actor, so they ended up giving him a full arc where he helped save the day. With Keery set to star alongside Ryan Reynolds in Free Guy, his career is likely to go up and up from here. When it comes to Breaking Bad, it is hard to imagine the show without both Brian Cranston's Walter White and Aaron Paul's Jesse Pinkman. The two offset each other perfectly, with one falling into darkness and the other one redeeming himself throughout the course of the show. However, Jesse was actually supposed to be killed off at the end of season one and to be the reason Walt dove further into darkness. But Vince Gilligan and co liked Paul so much they ended up sparing him, keeping him on for the show's entire run and even having a spin-off movie centered on him. The only complaint they had about Paul was that his teeth were a little too perfect for a drug addict. Bob Odenkirk's Saul Goodman and Jonathan Banks's Mike Ermentrout were also meant to be just tiny cameo roles, with Mike only supposed to be in one episode. But they were also so good that they ended up being major characters and also got a spin-off. When it comes to improvisational maestros, there aren't many better than Neil Flynn in Scrubs. A huge majority of the janitor's lines were completely improvised, and he was given free reign to do what he wanted. But the janitor wasn't originally supposed to be a major character and just a one-time gag. The character was just meant to be a joke in the opening episode and just a figment of JD's imagination, hence why no other characters interact with him till later on. But Flynn was so good that he was kept on for the show's entire run and even got to create the brain trust and the legendary barbershop group, Hippleton. Friends is probably the strongest when it comes to sharing the screen. But at first, the Friends characters weren't all created equal. In fact, Chandler and Phoebe were meant to be more like secondary characters with the main focus on Ross, Rachel, Monica, and Joey. But when David Crane and Martin Kaufman met with Matthew Perry and Lisa Kudrow, revisions were made to make plot lines that involved all six Friends. Seeing as how he got his own spin-off show, Kelsey Grammer's Fraser Crane is easily one of the most popular characters when it comes to Cheers, with him playing the character in over 450 episodes of television. However, Fraser was only supposed to be a small supplementary character, but Grammer was so good that he ended up being a mainstay in the show, as well as getting his own spin-off, and has since starred in a number of other shows and movies, with him of course being the voice of Sideshow Bob in The Simpsons. <laughs> Jason Manzukis is known for his crazy, offbeat, and unhinged characters appearing in the likes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, The Good Place, Bob's Burgers, and of course his big TV break, 
the League. Before he made it on the small screen, Manzoukas cut his teeth at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, mastering improv and then getting a minor role as Raffi on the League, which he quickly made into a major one due to his deranged and hilarious style. If you've watched Gilmore Girls, when it comes to Lorelai's love interests, you're either Team Luke or Team Christopher, or Team Jason if you're weird. But Lorelai's love life was originally supposed to be a lot less complicated. That's because she was intended to get back together with Christopher and Luke wasn't supposed to be a love interest at all, or was just meant to be one of the background characters as the grumpy diner owner. However, the Gilmore Girls team loved the chemistry between actors Lauren Graham and Scott Patterson so much, he ended up being a major character as the show went on. While he might have some leading roles in the likes of Superstore and Monsters at Work, before his breakout role in Mad Men, Ben Feldman was struggling to get his career off the ground, but he managed to score a role as Michael Ginsberg on the show, which he turned into a major role and even got himself an Emmy nomination along the way. Supernatural fans all have their favorite characters, and one of them is the most recurring angel, Castile, played by Misha Collins. However, Castile was only supposed to have a short three episode arc in season four and that be it. And the producers intended to write him out of the show several times during its run. But Castile kept becoming more and more popular among the fans and he managed to make himself a major character in season five and appeared in over 150 episodes of the show. Moving into another fantasy series, True Blood may be based on a book series, but that doesn't always mean they have to follow every word. Case in point, Nelson Ellis' role as Lafayette Reynolds. In the books, Lafayette dies early on, but the show's creator Alan Ball fell in love with the character and how he interacted with his fellow cast members and decided to promote him to series regular, which proved to be a massively popular choice among fans. Keeping on with the fantasy theme, James Marster's Spike is seen as an integral part of the Buffy the Vampire series, developing a complicated relationship with the titular Buffy. However, Spike was intended just to be another soulless demon that Buffy was supposed to kill and Joss Whedon was dead set on killing the character after five episodes. However, fans quickly fell in love with the character, convincing the production to change their mind, with Spike becoming a major character in the rest of the show's run. Steve Urkel, or, you know, Urkel, is probably the best known character from Family Matters, if not one of the best known in TV as a whole. But just before he was cast as the iconic character, actor Jaleel White was on the verge of quitting acting once and for all, with him wanting to get out of TV and pursue a career in basketball. Before he called it quits though, his agent decided to put him up for one role, getting him the gig as a one episode character, which was of course, Urkel. Urkel became so popular though that one episode became nine seasons, and he is now probably one of the most recognizable faces on TV. And finally, Henry Winkler's The Fonz is undoubtedly one of the most famous characters of all time, but he was only intended to be a side character. But due to the popularity of the character during taping, he got more and more popular and ended up getting some real big storylines. 